welcome. I'm Angela Thornton. I invite you to come spend the next 30 minutes with me in Wise Word as we discuss Take Your Position. have one or so we should but there's a story in the Bible that I want to talk about before we get really into what it means to take your position let's talk about the background of how we're going to get to our focus scripture which is 2nd Chronicles 20 2nd Chronicles 19 2 through 3 there's a man named Jehu they say he's the son of Hanani the seer he went out to meet with Jehoshaphat and he said should you help the wicked and befriend those who hate the Lord. Because of this, Jehoshaphat, the Lord's anger is with you. But then he says in verse three, still there is some good in you and that you have removed the sacred poles from the land and you set your heart on seeking God. So let this be encouragement to you that there's some good in you despite what you have done. There's still some good in us. It's not what you did because what you did is not who you are. And so as we get a little further down in that chapter, verse 11, Amariah, I love all these Old Testament names, the high priest, he says he's going to have the final say in all the cases involving the Lord. Then there's some guy named Zebediah, the son of Ishmael, not that one, not the one from Genesis, a leader from the tribe of Judah. See, he's going to have all the final say in the civil cases. And the Levites are going to assist you to make sure that justice is served. So take courage as you fulfill your duties and may the Lord be with you and with those who do what is right. Here's what I want you to know. Everybody got a position. Amariah had one position. Jehu had another position. Everybody took their position and did their something to do. And so that leads us to 2 Chronicles 20. It's a little lengthy, so we might not read all 13 verses, but as we say in church, in your leisure time, <laughs> read the verses. But it came like this. Now it came about that after the sons of Moab and all of those folk. But the good part of this is actually when you get down to about 13. They came to make war against Jehoshaphat. Just know that. These folk came, they were going to make war. And the Bible says it was a great multitude coming against them. There's a whole bunch of them. And they were coming from everywhere out of Amron, and then we keep going. We get down to about verse five or six. Jehoshaphat got afraid, because he was like, listen, God, um, it's a lot of them. It's more of them than it is of us. Mm -hmm. And if I'm gonna be real truthful, I got just a little bit of fear. And then he said, he stood in the assembly of all the people. He stood in the house of the Lord and he started praying. That's what we should do. When you know the enemy is coming and it's more him than it is in you, David said today, don't be afraid. Why? Because you serve the God of all flesh. You're their flesh too. So he did what he knew to do. He prayed. He said, oh Lord God of our fathers, you are not, aren't you the God in the heavens? Or don't you rule over all the kingdoms in power and might in your hand? Didn't you drive out the inhabitants of this land? Didn't you part a sea and a few million folk walk through it? Surely you can take care of these people. So then we hop down to about verse 13. And he's you know, asking God about evil coming upon them. And then Judah was standing before the Lord, all the people, everybody. The church was on one accord. Everybody stood before the Lord. And it said, with their infants, with their wives, and their children. Everybody stood before the Lord. And then we get to the good part, verse 14 through 18. The Spirit of the Lord came upon one of the men. I love it in the Old Testament, he came upon them, but in the New Testament, he lives in us. So we don't have to worry about it. It's a part-time thing. Amen. Yeah, he came upon one of the guys and his name was Jehaziel. You don't need to know he's the son of Zechariah, who's the son of somebody else, who's the son of somebody else, who's the descendant of Asaph. Everybody had a son and begot somebody. So we, we got to him. And then he said, listen, all you people of Judah and Jerusalem, 
Listen, King, this is what I need you to know. This is what the Lord says. Everybody needs that one somebody Amen. that can hear from God. Because, you know, if you walk it in fear, you can't hear from God. Amen. But dude said, let me tell you what the Lord said. Do not be afraid. Don't be discouraged by this mighty army. For the battle is not yours, but God's. Yes. And then he gave him some instructions. Tomorrow, march out against them. Yeah, I know you're scared, but you march to them. Don't let the enemy come to you. You go to him. Okay. And then he told them where you're going to find them. You're going to find them through the ascent of Z's at the end of the valley that opens up. So this is where you're going to find them. But what I love, I tell you, I love verse 17. Who that thing get good to me? Verse 17, he says, but you won't even need to fight. Wow. Yes. Yes. And this is where we get our title from. He said, take your position. Lord have mercy. Amen. Take your position. Wow. Yes, yes, yes. See, we always hear the battle is not yours. Stand still and see the victory, the salvation of the Lord. No, 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 no. But before you stand still, he said, take your position, which means you got a position to take. You got a position. Possess your position. Take your position. And then it says, then stand still. You got to be in position first. You got to be in the position like you're going to fight, even though you know you don't have to fight. Take your position, then stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. Or other translations say, watch the Lord's victory. Amen. Watch Amen. the Lord's yes. victory. Yes. He is with you, people of Judah and Jerusalem. And then he gives them another instruction. Tells them again, don't be afraid. Don't be discouraged. Because sometimes you might not be afraid, but you just might be discouraged because you're tired. He said, don't be afraid. Don't be discouraged. And then he tells them again, go out against them tomorrow. Yeah, yeah. I'm, this is the second time. If God tells you something twice, he mean it. Go out against them tomorrow for the Lord is with you. Now, the problem is sometimes you engage in battles that he didn't tell you to engage in. And then you get cracked in the head and wonder why. Because he didn't tell you to fight that one. He said, but go out. The Lord is with you. And what I love about the king, he never questioned him. Michelle. He never said, really? What does that mean? Are you sure you heard from God? The king bowed low with his face to the ground. And all the people of Judah did, the Jerusalem did the same thing. They were like, hold on. The, the king laying prostrate, we will too. Everybody laid prostrate, bowed and worshiped the Lord. Everybody. Because the scripture says, take your position, then stand still. But you got to be in position first. And once you get to position, don't move, stand still. And then it said, and see the salvation of the Lord, the victory. So you're going to take your position up on the wall and stand still and watch God fight. Because that's what that means. And so I had this little thought. I'm of an age when I remember when Muhammad Ali was Cassius Clay. Don't let the gray hair fool you. And he had a fight with a man named Sonny Liston. Now, I don't remember the fight. I'm not that old. But I remember reading about the fight. And Liston was the heavyweight champion. And they fought their first fight. Ali knocked him clean out, like out, all the way out, first round, right cross, out. Everybody was like, what happened? Nobody saw it coming. Liston. Above all, folk never saw it coming. <laughs> all he felt was that right cross to the left temple. Ali's punch was unexpected, unforeseen, and not anticipated by anybody who was watching the fight that night. Nobody. But here's the key. Ali was looking for that one opportunity to throw that one punch because he had studied his enemy. He had studied Sonny Liston. He took his position. He stood still, and when the time came, he anticipated the move. That's how Satan operates. And I'm not saying that Liston or Ali was Satan, but what I am saying is Satan is just like Ali. He studies you. He waits for that one opportunity to throw that one punch. Just like Ali studied Liston, Liston never studied Ali because he just assumed he was going to win. And sometimes we get a little cocky. Mm -hmm. 
You can't f defeat an enemy you haven't studied. <laughs> you can't defeat. That's why it's called recon, reconnaissance. Take your position. Satan studies us. He looks for weaknesses. He looks for vulnerabilities. And then he decides on a plan of attack. And just like Ali, he lands the unexpected, unforeseen, unanticipated punch. Because we're not in position. Because you're not in position. Because the Bible says this about David. There was a time when men were at war and David was at home. He was where God wasn't. And that's how he saw that naked woman Bathsheba. She looked good to him. And then the next thing they know, and he was going into her, and then they had a baby. Yeah, then he had a baby. He was where God wasn't. He wasn't in position. So he couldn't get the victory. And so how do you respond to the unexpected? I mean, because you do know there's a way to respond to a sneak attack. And it's determined by how prepared you are. Have you listened to the Lord? What, what, did the, what did the man tell Jehoshaphat? He said, King, this is what the Lord say. Don't fear. Don't be discouraged. Go out tomorrow. God with you. King never said, well, are we, are we supposed to take weapons? How many weapons? How many men? Which way do we go? He just bowed down to the Lord. Are we that in tune when somebody says God said something? Mm -hmm. How do you respond? Because here's the thing. If you're always in position, while he's roaming the earth, seeking whom he may devour, you have become undevourable because you are in your rightful position. I heard a pastor one day say, Satan is Johnny on the spot. He's always ready to devour. But if you're in position, he about to starve because you won't eat me because I have taken my position. And because God said, I don't have to fight. I just need to stand still and watch him do the work. But the problem is, I want to fight too. You know, we, I, Satan, I tell you what, you stop talking. <laughs> stop talking. I serve you notice. Which notice? <laughs> How many notices? Because <laughs> what are you going to serve from a notify? You know, you got to respond in such a way that the heavens are going to open up at the floodgates so God can move on your behalf. Because when we're out of position, you're going to be easily overtaken yeah. by the enemy. You're going to be easily overtaken by the enemy of the Lord. That's what happened to Ahab, 19 too. He was out of position. Wow. He said, listen, all you people, verse 15 again, Judah and Jerusalem, listen, Jehoshaphat. Listen here. This is what the Lord says. Do not fear. Do not be discouraged. Not even by this mighty army. The battle is not yours, but it's the Lord. Are we in position where God can say, just stand still, I got this. And are we willing to let him have it? Or do we think we need to tell people that we're warriors and I, I do spiritual warfare? <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, warfare. Can't pray a coal off a baby, as my girlfriend says. <laughs> okay, warfare. Have you taken your position? Has the Lord told you the battle plan? Because if you're going to war and he hadn't told you the battle plan, then you're about to fight for nothing and get beat. Mm -hmm. Because you have not listened to the general of your army. Mm -hmm. You have decided that as a buck private, I know what's best. Mm -hmm. And you about to get beat up. Mm -hmm. So he said, tomorrow, march out against them. He didn't say saunter. He didn't say run. He said march. March out against them. And then he told them where you're going to find them. And when you see them coming, at the end of the valley that open up, you're not going to even have to fight. What he never told us is if they saw him. He said, you go out and march toward them. You will see them. The Bible never says they'll see you. Because mm -hmm. if you're in your position, mm -hmm. God has hidden you under the shadow of the Almighty. Amen. If you're in your position, Amen. so he can fight. That's why you don't have to. Because he's fighting for you. Amen. He just says, stand still and see the salvation, the victory of the Lord. Don't be afraid. Don't be discouraged. Yeah. We know it's a lot of them. We know it's a mighty army. I know it's a big trial. I know it's a big tribulation. I know it's a bad doctor's report. I know it's rebellious kids. I know it's a crazy spouse. But stand still and see the salvation of the Lord because God says, I got this. I'm a fight for you. 
Thank Go out against them tomorrow, cause the Lord, all caps, Adonai, Jehovah, I am that I am, the self-existing God, the one who exists within himself is with you. Amen. Amen. Go out tomorrow, cause the Lord is with you. So that means we have a position to take. We have a position to play. Are we doing it? Jehoshaphat just bowed to the Lord. He was like, okay, God, I got this. You told me to go, I'm going to do this, but I'm going to worship you before I do it, though. I'm going to worship you and say, thank you, Lord. I'm going to worship you and say, thank you that you're with me. I'm going to worship you, and the people are going to follow me, and we're going to give you praise in advance of the victory you've already promised me. I'm not going to even get upset. Just hold the fact, never took one spear, one weapon. He never lifted one shield. He didn't even take the weapons of war. He just marched out there. Because why am I taking a gun if God said I don't have to shoot it? Because now what I'm saying to God is, well, you know what? We might need to take some weapons just in case. <laughs> and if you got a just in case praise, then what you're saying to God is you can't really do it. Ooh, hallelujah. Just in case. So Jehoshaphat bowed his face to the Lord. Thank you, Lord. The people worshipped him. And so here are my points, and we're going to be out of here. If you're walking in fear, don't. Stop. Ooh. Just stop walking in fear. Just stop walking in fear. Fear is a spirit, first of all, and it ain't of God. God is not giving you a spirit of fear. So fear is a spirit, and it's from the enemy. Stop fighting battles you were never meant to fight. Stop fighting battles. I know they crazy, but that's not, they're not your battle. Thank you. That's not your battle. My battle is to pray. God's battle is to fight. And verse 15 reminds us that it's not mine. So why am I going to fight your battle and it's not my battle? That's not my fight. That's not my something to do. We all need to do our something to do. You ever watch football? I promise you the center can't do what the quarterback does. And if you got a tight end, trying to be a linebacker, you're going to have a whole messed up team because yeah. everybody is out of position. Yeah. And if you're out of position, you're about to lose. You're about to lose. The other thing we need to understand in this fight is you serve a strategic God. Amen. Yeah. That's why he said, you just stand still. I got this. I created you. I created the heavens and the universe. I sustain them by the power of my word. What do you mean I can't take over? It's a mighty army for you. Not a mighty army for me, because I created them like I created you. Ooh, amen. You serve a strategic God. Yeah, yeah. We don't have to fear or be discouraged mm -hmm. because God has already done the reconnaissance work for us. Amen. That's why he said, just march out to him. Mm -hmm. I didn't tell you to go try to recon. Mm -hmm. I didn't tell you to go figure out how many of them it was. I didn't tell you to see where they're going to be hiding mm -hmm. and how many people we need to take. I just told you to march out toward them. Mm -hmm. He said, go toward them. Yeah. So as you're going toward them, he say then, take your position. Now stand still. I got this. The other thing is, God will tell you when to fight, and he tells you where the enemy going to be. Ooh. He's already done the work for you. They're going to be coming around from this, and then they're going to be looking like this, and then they're going to be doing this. Mm -hmm. he, he tells you where they are. Why? Because nothing is hidden from him. That's right. They might be hidden from you, right. but they are not hidden from him. Amen. Nothing is hidden from the eyes of God. Thank you, Lord. Then you don't have to worry because he said, I got you. Mm -hmm. You won't even have to fight. Thank I love it. He said, you won't even have to fight. Just in case you thought you were, Thank you don't have to fight. You won't be the instrument that God uses. You'll be the spectator. That's you get to watch it. Yes. You get to watch it. You're not going to be the weapon. You're going to be sitting there spectating like, oh, look, I got a front row seat to this battle. Lord have mercy, they getting beat down. Mm -hmm. Yeah, take your position. The position is already yours. Mm -hmm. It's waiting for you to take it. Take your position. That's like he told them, possess the land. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna give you the land. I didn't tell you, I didn't care nothing about somebody else living in the land. I said, I was gonna give the land to you. Right. Now we're like, well, God, you know, it's giants over there in that land. And it's a bunch of them, and they real tall. And, it's, and you know, they got big houses, and you know, God, they, they got big weapons, and it's a bunch of them. He said, I said, possess the land. Yes. Yes. 
I already knew people were there. I created the land. I created them. I decided that it was your land. And so you go possess what I told you to possess. Now take your position. And like I said earlier, David was out of position and it cost him dearly. He was where God was not. And when you're not where God is, you can't do what God says. And when you can't do what God says, then that's disobedience and rebellion. Yeah. And when you disobey God, you want to lose an end. Yeah. What happened to Paul David? The baby died. Yeah. Yeah. That was just one thing. Yeah. There was always war in his house. Yeah. A son raped a daughter. Mm. The son killed the son that raped the daughter. Mm. The son that killed the son that raped the daughter tried to kill the daddy. Come. Do you understand that one sin mm -hmm. led to just, multiple. just multiple issues? Because scripture says the kings were at war. David was at home. Everybody got a position on a sports team. Runners have their lane. When that gun goes off, if you would start in lane four and you drift over to lane five, you are disqualified. Football players have a position. The quarterback is not suited to do what the cornerback does. The center on a basketball can't do what the small forward does. Not his position. You're not built for it. You're not built for that position. It, you can't do at seven foot six what somebody at five foot nine can do. So if you're gonna take your position, you gotta know what that position is. And your position gotta be rooted and grounded in the word of the Lord. Your position has to be behind the shield of faith, under the shadow of the almighty, in the sword of the spirit. Where is my position? Cause here's what I know, God can't lose. He never has. He never will. Yes. How could he possibly lose to the thing that he created? I created you. What do you mean I'm going to lose to you? I know more about you than you do. I knew you before you was a you. If you don't go somewhere and sit down. Yeah, I knew you before you were in the womb. But here's the thing. It's only after you've taken your position that you can stand still and see the victory of the Lord. It's only after you take your position can you see the deliverance. You have the privilege of being a spectator, having a front row seat. Amen. Center court, baby, center court, center court. You have center court. You're the front row seat, so no matter how difficult it gets, don't be afraid. No matter how difficult it gets, don't be discouraged. Because the Lord says, the Lord is present tense, not was, past tense, not will be, future is with you. It's what he said to Moses. Listen to this, Exodus 14, 13. Moses told the people, don't be afraid. Just stand still and watch the Lord rescue you today. The Egyptians you see today, you will see no more. Mm -hmm. Good God Almighty. He said, don't worry about it. Just be still. Watch God do what he's going to do. And then verse 18, he says, and when the battle is over, we back to Jehoshaphat. The victory has been won. Do what Jehoshaphat did. Bow down to the Lord and worship him and thank him and praise him and adore him. Because I didn't have to lift a finger to fight. And it was a bunch of them. It was a mighty army. All I needed to do was take the position that you told me to take. Stand over here. Be still. Open your eyes. Watch me do the work. And so a soldier's motto goes something like this. Never act rashly or out of fear. Don't rush the fight and don't act in fear. Hmm. So the soldier says, never act rashly. Don't run headlong into a battle you're not prepared for. Mm -hmm. Just because you see somebody, you don't know what's behind there. That's what happened in Vietnam. Don't. Listen, you can't fight jungle warfare if all you know how to fight is on the concrete. You don't know anything about the jungle. Mm -hmm. But don't be afraid if you have to go to the jungle. Because if the Lord is with you, it doesn't matter what's in the jungle. It doesn't matter who is in the jungle. Don't rush the fight, but don't act in fear. And this is what I know. The anointing attracts attacks. Okay. Just know this. If you are anointed, attacks will come. Yeah, yeah. See, you can't be anointed just to walk around and say, you know, I got an anointing of God on me. No, 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 precious. The anointing is for a purpose and it attracts attacks. 
And how do I know? Moses attacked. Elijah attacked. David. Poor Job. Poor Job. Jesus. Mm -hmm. Paul. You. Mm. Me. But this is what I can tell you. As you take your position, as you stand still, you won't have to fight. Thank you. you won't have to be the instrument that God uses. Thank you. you get to be the spectator. Mm -hmm. He's made this easy. Mm -hmm. We make it hard. Yes. We make it hard. Because yes. we want to know what God, how, how is the victory going to be won? Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The scripture says today, you know, we're reading through the Psalms in 31 days, and today is day, whatever the day is. We read Psalm 131 today. And it says, God, I don't concern myself with things that's too big for me. Mm. Mm. I don't concern myself with things that's too mighty for me. What is he saying? I don't worry about how you're going to do it. I just ask you to do it. I can't dictate the how, the when, the why. I don't worry about that. You said you supply all my needs. I don't worry about how you're going to do it. I can't concern myself with that. So if you understand that you have become the spectator, and you don't have to be the warrior, and you can stand still and take your position and watch God work for you, here's what it is. Victory is mine, Thank you. saith the Lord. Thank you. He ain't name a battle he has lost. Mm -hmm. Name a fight that he came out on the losing end. Take your position, stand still, see God's salvation, amen. <laughs>